So in this podcast, we're going to discuss, is your gut health impacting your thyroid function? So there's intimate relationships between your gastrointestinal tract and your thyroid and how your thyroid impacts your gastrointestinal tract. So I'm going to talk about both of them and then talk about what does it mean to you if you're having symptoms and what are some things you can do to address it and kind of get the big picture of the relationship between the gastrointestinal tract, what we call the gut, and the thyroid. When we use the, the term gut, that means all the bacteria in the gut, and that's called the microbiome. And in recent studies, the microbiome has shown to be a key factor in health. So, so with all these different studies being done on looking at how um, the microbiome impacts our health, there's been links to it impacting our endocrine function, or brain function, or cardiovascular function. But specifically, I want to focus on, on the thyroid. Now, if you have ever been diagnosed with hypothyroidism or if you have low thyroid hormone status states, um, there, there could be some impact on your gut function. And also, if you have been diagnosed hypothyroid, the most common cause of that is a really underlying uh, condition called Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune response against the thyroid gland. And there have been several publications now in the peer-reviewed literature where they look at the microbiome of patients suffering from Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, and their microbiomes and bacteria in their gut are totally different than people that don't have the disease. So um, we know that it, it really is a, a vicious cycle. So there are some people that have their gut disruption, then turn on this autoimmune disease that leads to hypothyroidism, but then their hypothyroidism states tends to have an influence on their gut. And and this bi-directional relationship are the things that I really want to focus on with this podcast. So let's first start with how thyroid hormones impact the gut. So if a person, for example, has their thyroid gland fail on them or become inefficient with them and they're not really producing adequate amounts of thyroid hormones, there could be major impacts in their gastrointestinal health. So if you're listening to this podcast and you've had a chronic gastrointestinal issue your whole life or for many, many years, and nothing's really been able to fix it, where you're eating organic, eating lots of healthy foods, taking lots of digestive enzymes, taking lots of probiotics, doing bone broth, doing all the different things you're supposed to do for your gut, and you're still not getting better, uh, you really got to make sure you've had hypothyroidism ruled out. The easiest way to do that is to look at a marker called TSH, um, look at a thyroid profile, uh, but for the focus now, is we're just going to talk about the relationship between the thyroid and the gut. So when you look at the gastrointestinal system, the gut, one of the key things that's important for the gut is really um, intestinal contractions. Or to say it differently, there, there's several key structures you need to have working in order to have healthy gastrointestinal function. One of them is you need to have lots of diverse bacteria in the gut. So that's called the microbiome. Another key thing that's really important to have healthy gastrointestinal function is you have to have what are called intestinal tight junctions that are, that are that have integrity. They're not opened up with the condition called leaky gut. Another key factor to have healthy gut function is you have to have proper what they call oral tolerance, that the immune system in the gut is not overactive and reacting to every single type of food protein. Another key feature of having healthy gut is having blood flow to the gut. So you can deliver nutrients and growth factors and hormones to gastrointestinal tract so it can regenerate and develop. Through the normal process of eating food, there's inflammatory reactions that destroy the gut. So it's very important for us to have regeneration of our gut at a faster rate uh, than degeneration or inflammatory responses. So blood flow is a key factor in, in that. And then uh, actual gut cells uh, really need to have what's called metabolic activity. So that's another part that thyroid hormones have influence on the gut. And then the other key thing is smooth muscles in the gut. The, in order to have healthy gut, you have to have contraction and, and blood flow of vessels that go to the gut. So it's not just about taking a probiotic or taking some kind of digestive enzyme. So everything from... <laughs> the bacteria, to blood flow, to circulation, to healthy tight junctions, to immune cell function, immune tolerance in the gut, to the contraction in the gut are all necessary to have a healthy gut. So let's first talk about uh, intestinal motility and, and, and contractions of the gut. So this is really, really important. Now, your biggest clue that you may have something happening with your intestinal motility issues that impacts your gut is you just have chronic constipation. <laughs> so if you have always had a hard time or recently have had a really hard time with having regular bowel movements. Maybe you have to have magnesium or take laxatives all the time or do enemas to have regular bowel movements. That's a red flag that you may have some intestinal motility issues. Now, thyroid hormones have a huge impact 
on intestinal motility. So there are smooth muscles uh, in the gastrointestinal tract that have to contract in a sequence in order for you to move your food. And, and this, this, this normal movement of food is called the transit time. And the transit time is really critical because when you, as soon as you swallow and start digesting your food, your food has to move through your GI tract in order for everything to work. If your food cannot properly move through your GI tract, then you can have uh, uh, bacterial overgrowths, you can have yeast overgrowths, you can have lots of fermentation that takes place, you can really disrupt the microenvironment of your gut. And there are people that have chronic gastrointestinal issues because they don't have proper motility. So realize that if you're in a low thyroid state or if you, and when I say low thyroid state, that can mean several things. Uh, that can mean one, you have hypothyroidism, your, your, your thyroid gland's not working, so you may need to consider being on replacement. Two, you are on replacement, but the underlying cause of that is Hashimoto's. And one of the key features of Hashimoto's is that it impacts how thyroid receptors respond to thyroid hormones. And then three, um, when you're looking at uh, this relationship uh, between the gut and this and this uh, smooth muscle contraction issues, that these th thyroid hormones also impact the vascular dynamics to these smooth muscles that cause contraction. So uh, if you have a hypothyroid state from an endocrine disease or if you have uh, lack of uh, response with the receptor sites, um, from Hashimoto's, then the intestinal motility and blood flow and circulation to your gut can all be compromised. And that could mean even though you're eating a healthy diet and doing well, you could have some issues with that. Now, there are some people that only chief clinical presentation of hypothyroidism is constipation. <laughs> so be aware of that. So realize that thyroid hormones have a significant impact on the smooth muscles of the gut. And if those muscles are not working properly, then it's very easy to develop malabsorption syndromes and yeast overgrowths and constipation issues. Now, thyroid hormones also impact contraction of the gallbladder. And when people are thyroid hormone deficient, um, they can really end up with gallbladder issues. Now, let's talk about what gallbladder symptoms are. So if you've noticed you can't eat fatty foods, that could be anything fried. If you eat anything fried, you get bloated and extended. You can't take fish oils because you burp them up all the time. Those are signs that your gallbladder may not be healthy. So any kind of bloating or distension that takes place, any kind of burping that takes place if you eat anything fatty is, is really a, a strong clinical sign that your gallbladder is not working well. So let's talk about what that means. So your gallbladder is producing something called bile. And when you eat something fatty, your gallbladder contracts and releases bile into your intestinal tract so you can digest your fats. But if you have a long-standing thyroid condition, what happens is the gallbladder is not contracting very well because those, those muscles of the gallbladder need thyroid hormones to actually activate and contract. And then the bile starts to uh, thicken, and they call this bilary stasis or called bile sludge. And you can actually see that on an abdo in an abdominal ultrasound. It's a pre-gallstone stage called gall gallbladder sludge. And if this gallbladder sludge continues to develop over time, then it becomes a gallstone. So when people have lack of thyroid hormones, um, their bile metabolism gets impacted, so they're more prone to get stasis. And that combined with lack of gallbladder contraction leads to people that start getting gallbladder sludge, what they call bilary stasis, uh, just bile not moving very well, and then eventually gallstones. And then these sludge and gallstone states really lead to inefficiency digesting fats, which can become um, issues uh, when people eat very high fat foods or even if even fish fish oils or things that are even healthy for them. So those are another relationship between how thyroid hormones impact the gut. Now thyroid hormones also impact the intestinal tight junctions. One of the major areas of uh, research that's come out in recent years is how um, leaky gut or intestinal permeability impacts health. And with people that have lack of thyroid hormones, thyroid hormone deficiencies, or people that have Hashimoto's, they seem to have this commonality between this leaky gut syndrome pattern. So there are relationships between how thyroid hormones help with regeneration of the intestinal tight junctions. Now, in the classical like world of nutrition functional medicine, 
you know, someone develops leaky gut syndrome, they go on a diet to restrict all inflammatory food, and they take things like glutamine to help provide fuel and other nutrients to help provide fuel to help regenerate their gut. But if they're in a hypothyroid state, none of those things can really work because um, you still have to have thyroid hormones to promote that anabolic state, that, that metabolic activity to allow those intestinal cells, those tight junctions to regenerate. So that's one of the things uh, that is very important. Now, once again, some people um, that have Hashimoto's, their autoimmune response is making their thyroid receptors not respond to thyroid hormones. So even though they have thyroid hormones in their body and the lab tests are normal, the inflammatory response from the autoimmunity is making these thyroid receptors not work. So they can't get their gut into an anabolic state and they can never heal their leaky gut. And since they can't heal their leaky gut, <laughs> that leaky gut perpetuates their autoimmune gut issues and they're stuck in a vicious cycle. So this is where you really need to address dietary lifestyle factors that impact the autoimmunity. In addition to the leaky gut issues that impacts autoimmunity, um, when there's lack of thyroid hormones or lack of thyroid activity due to Hashimoto's causing inflammation, making those thyroid receptor sites not respond, one of the things that takes place is there is lack of mm, bacteria diversity in the gut. So this is called microbiome diversity. And now several studies have shown people that have Hashimoto's have impaired microbiome diversity. And other studies show that lack of microbiome diversity then promotes autoimmune reactivity because they lose something called tolerance. And, you know, eating a very diverse list of vegetables can be very important to have diverse bacteria, but so are having healthy amounts of thyroid hormones. So those are really, really critical. And then the other part of thyroid hormones that comes in with the gut is thyroid hormones impact blood flow and circulation to the gut, and thyroid hormones regulate what are called dendritic cells of the gut. And dendritic cells of the gut are what's are these little immune cells on top of your gut that sample food proteins that come in, and they, res they either tell your immune system to react against the food protein or not to react against the food protein. And when people are in a low thyroid state, these dendritic cells tend to overreact to food proteins, which then causes foods to cause inflammation. So what we really see with people that are suffering from thyroid disorders, Hashimoto's being the main cause of thyroid disorders, is they are really dealing with this vicious cycle between how thyroid hormones impact their gut and then how their gut impacts their underlying cause of autoimmunity, and they're really having a hard time. And that could mean they really can't get their gut fixed because of their because of underlying hypothyroidism not being managed very well. Uh, maybe it's because they don't have enough thyroid hormones. Maybe because their autoimmunity is not making those thyroid receptor sites response. They really have a hard time getting that gut under control. And since they can't get their gut under control very well and heal those tight junctions and improve their microbiome diversity and improve their oral tolerance and improve blood flow of the gut, they have an ongoing gastrointestinal issue that then promotes their autoimmune response. So you know, the question is, well, what do you do? Uh, how do you get out of this vicious cycle? Well, the way to get out of this vicious cycle is you really have to make sure that a person is not in a thyroid hormone deficiency state, so their TSH levels are normal. And then the second part of that is to really make sure their autoimmune Hashimoto's response is really kept in check. And at the end of the day, when you're looking at the Hashimoto's autoimmune response, there is dietary factors, environmental factors, whether it's chemicals or infections or lifestyle factors that really promote the autoimmune disease that all really have to be taken into place. So the bottom line is that there is a whole body approach to really unwinding this vicious cycle. You, it's not going to happen just by taking a probiotic. It's not going to happen by just taking digestive enzyme. It's not going to happen just by taking thyroid hormones. You really have to treat the autoimmunity and all the triggers that are involved with it in order to have a chance to unwind this vicious part of this. And this is why so many people that have hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's are having so many symptoms and, and they persist even though they take, take replacement. So I did create a course called Hashimoto's uh, Solving the Puzzle. It's available at Dr. K News, DRK -N -E -W -S, where I walk you through the steps and give you menus and give you questionnaire forums, give you all the concepts and teach you how to walk through it to really figure out some of those strategies. And that may be helpful for you if you're trying to figure out how to unwind this gut-thyroid relationship. Now, you should also know that until the gut becomes stable, it's going to be very hard to have proper or efficient thyroid function. And, and unrelated to Hashimoto's impacting thyroid receptor site responses, it's very important for you to know that having a healthy bacteria in your gut is really critical for converting what's called T4 
to T3. So when your thyroid gland is producing hormones, 94% of what it puts out is T4, and that T4 has to become T3. Some of that T4 gets converted to something called T, uh, T3 sulfate, or and also T3 acidic acid. And that T3 sulfate and T3 acidic acid then get metabolized by healthy, diverse bacteria in the gut into actual T3. So one of the things to know is that part of this vicious cycle is that, you know, if you can't get your microbiome diverse, which is which really involves diet, lifestyle applications, and getting a healthy gut, you have a really hard time converting T4 to T3 efficiently, and that can impact thyroid symptoms. We also know that when people have imbalances in gut, they can get this leaky gut pattern, and one of the things that they found is that when people get leaky gut, they can get a condition called endotoxemia. And endotoxemia is where um, end products from gram-negative bacteria in the gut get into circulation called lipopolysaccharides. And these lipopolysaccharides bind to different immune cells in the body called TL4 and to the thyroid gland specifically, and they cause systemic inflammation. So at the end of the day, <laughs> you look at all these... Uh, there's a lot of complex interrelationships that's, that researchers and scientists have found where you have the thyroid impact the gut and the gut impact the thyroid. And part of the underlying cause of hypothyroidism is really an autoimmune component. And part of managing the autoimmune component is critical to make thyroid hormones work efficiently and so you can help balance the gut. And at the same time, you have to balance the gut and the microbiome and all the things associated with it to kind of break out of this vicious cycle. This is why it's so difficult for people that have chronic illnesses, chronic fatigue, chronic metabolic issues that have thyroid disorders to really start to feel better because they really think it's as simple as just trying to take some, you know, glutamine to fix the leaky gut or taking a probiotic to fix the leaky gut or just being on thyroid replacement. It's obviously much, much more complicated than that. So I hope this podcast helps you understand these, these, these inner relationships that take place between your gut and thyroid. And if you want some very step-by-step uh, -step approach strategies to uh, look at some things that you can do, once again, please check out Dr. K News and look at the Hashimoto Solving the Puzzle program. Thank you.